Hi, my name's Duncan, and if you've joined us in some previous FPNA courses, you may recognize me from some of those courses. So in this FPNA course, we're going to be using the model template that we're looking at right now. We've actually built this model template in a previous course. What we're going to be using it here for is to develop a system where we can put in actuals as they come in every month, and then at the end of the year, roll the model forward. One of the things that's so important with monthly FPNA analysis is to have a consistent system for file naming and file storage and being able to bring in the new data for the new month and also analyze what's happened during that month and decide whether or not we need or want to change our forward-looking forecasts. Another important thing that we're going to be looking at in this course is the importance of providing commentary or qualitative analysis as well as the quantitative analysis. The numbers matter and we're going to be analyzing the numbers, but we also want to look at what happened during the month, put some commentary into the model so we can communicate those findings to the audience that's looking through the model and really interested in our findings. Then once we work through all the months in the fiscal year, we're going to show you how to roll the model forward for the next fiscal year and also show you how to set a budget forecast so we can be ready to accept a new month's data for the new fiscal year. So we're really excited to share this course and also share some of these techniques with you through the course. The next video, let's just jump ahead. We're going to give you a very quick tour of this model template that we'll be using for the course. So this course called FPNA Professionals Model Roll Forward and Analysis is actually the second course in a series of three courses. If you haven't yet done the first course in the series, we would encourage you to check it out as going through these courses in order makes a ton of sense. And finally, once you've checked out this course, make sure to also check out our FPNA Professionals Model Protection and Presentation course. So you're probably really excited to get started. So let's jump ahead and take a tour of the model that we're going to be working on. So in this quick video, we thought we'd give you a tour of this financial model template that we're going to be using for this lab or simulation. Now, as you can see, we're here on the cover page for this FPNA model, and we can't stress enough how important it is to include cover pages on models. It's the first thing that the readers see when they open the model. It's the first thing that gets presented and printed, and it's our first chance to form a great first impression with the audience. Now, what we're going to do is flip over to the model tab, and we just use control page up to get over there. What we can see here is that we have lots of rich graphs and exhibits for the readers to see to help analyze the data. Now what we're really going to be doing in this case study or practice lab is that it's going to be effectively like a live simulation. First thing that we're going to do is supply you with the data for January. We have the model set on January here, so we'll be able to load the actuals into the model and analyze them and also analyze our forward-looking forecasts. Once we've analyzed the data for January and figured out what happened during the month, we're going to be putting some commentary in here to describe to the user exactly what happened in January and also put a little description in here as to whether or not we're going to change our forward-looking forecasts for 2025 or for 2026. The numbers are very important and the audience will definitely want to see the numbers, but over here this commentary is going to be critically important to helping our audience understand exactly what happened and how we're looking into the future. Once we've completed the process for January, we're going to save a copy of the model as a new file name and then move this forward to February. Now that we have two months of actuals here, we're going to analyze the data for February, come up with new commentary here to communicate to our audience. As we progress through the lab or the simulation, we're going to be going through a number of months. By the end of it, we'll get down to December like this, and we'll have a complete set of actuals all the way across. Now, once we get to this stage in the simulation, it will be time to roll the model forward, and we will walk you through how that process works. We will also use our forward-looking forecast to help set a budget forecast for the next upcoming fiscal year. So through this case study or lab, we effectively want to take you through a typical 12-month cycle of dealing with actuals every single month, then rolling the model forward to the next fiscal year and setting a budget forecast. 
So we're really excited to walk through this process of using this template with you through a 12-month cycle. So let's jump ahead to the next video where you can download the model templates and we can dig in and get started. So imagine for now, for this simulation, that it's December 2024, and we have set some forward-looking forecasts down here for the upcoming years. As you can see, this is our forecast for 2025. It matches the previous forecast, and this is our forecast here for 2026, and it also matches the previous forecast. So the model is set with the previous and current forecast matching so that we can analyze the variance and the percent change going forward if we make changes to those forward-looking forecasts. Now the other thing to make note of is this 2025 forecast that's right here. If you look closely, I'm just going to tap the page down button now for a sec, that forecast is exactly equal to our budget, which makes sense because at the beginning of the year, the budget is essentially a forward-looking forecast. For now, they're going to match, but as time goes forward, we'll start to deviate from that budget a little bit through the upcoming months. Now, the other way that we can show you that the 2025 forecast matches the budget is so if we use the page up button to get all the way up here to the graph toggle. Now we're going to use alt down to go in here and click over to budget. We can see that the budget line and the 2025 line are exactly overlapped on top of each other, showing that they're identical. And if we looked further down below in the model at the pricing schedule, we would also see the same thing. We would see the current and previous forecasts matching, and we would see the 2025 forecast matching the budget. So let's pop back into this cell for a second and hit Alt down and switch it back to years just like that. Now that you have an idea of how this template is set and what our starting point is going to be, let's jump ahead to the next video and we'll go through some file naming conventions, get this saved as January, take a look at the January data as well. Continue learning. Join CFI today.